Excel's personal macro workbook allows you to save shortcuts for use across all your Excel files. In this video, I'll show you my personal macro workbook and show you the shortcuts I use every day. So this is our second video on VBA. If you're looking to record a macro, please check out the other video. I'll link it above. This video is talking about the personal macro workbook. I have a personal macro workbook. If I go into Visual Basic, which I can also access with Alt F11, it opens up my personal macro workbook. I'll walk through each one of these, but I have about eight to 10 different macros that I use for shortcuts I use frequently. So fill right and fill down. These are by far the most helpful. And let's talk about what these do. If I was trying to fill in a financial model, what I might do is have some predetermined growth rate. Revenue times one plus a growth rate that I might want to link below. If I fill that in, nothing happens. But if I put 10%, now this is growing at 10% annually. What a lot of people would do is scroll up to the top, scroll over to the end, highlight the selection and hit control R to fill in that selection. And then you could fill in your growth rate and you have a cleanly built revenue forecast. What fill right does is it replaces the need to go through all those steps. So if I hit control shift R, I have filled in these two formulas because Excel will simply jump up to the top cell, scroll over, scroll down, highlight these cells and then fill it to the right. Fill right, very, very helpful for building financial models. I can do the same thing if my cost of goods sold is let's say a certain fixed percent of revenue, let's call this 30%, I can just fill that across to the right. And then if I fill across my percent, I can take my revenue minus my cost of goods sold and I've calculated my gross profit really, really easily. That's fill right. If we wanna talk about fill down, if we go to the file we use in our X lookup exercise, if you haven't seen that one, I will include a link above as well. What fill down does is instead of scrolling over to the column to your left, scrolling to the bottom, selecting the entire column and hitting control D, control shift D, will simply fill down that selection for you without having to go through that process. If you have watched almost any of the videos on this channel, I've probably used this shortcut. It is the most helpful shortcut you can add. It will save you countless hours in Excel. I try not to be someone that speaks in hyperbole, but this is no doubt the most helpful thing you can do in Excel. So fill right, fill down. We talked about those. Let's talk about column width, column height. These are both shortcuts that toggle through predetermined column widths and row heights. So if I use control shift H, now I have a column width of two. If I press this button again, I have a column width of eight. And then I have a column width of 15. And then a column width of 30. And then if I hit it again, I have a column width of two. So if you're going through a file and you want to make your columns a lot smaller, if say I wanted to shrink this column, I could easily do that with my toggle and just toggle through different column widths in my file. The same is true with my row heights. So control shift J will give me a row height of four. If I press it again, I get a row height of 13.5. And then if I press it one more time, I'll get 21. And then one more time we'll return 35.1. And I can simply toggle through different row heights to easily format my file without having to manually update each one of my row heights or column widths. So font color and color toggle, these are the same idea as column width and row height, but are for men your fill color or your font color. So if I highlight the selection and use control semicolon, now all my cells are blue. This is very helpful if you work building financial models and are trying to flag inputs. And if I use control shift K, now I've made this yellow. So different toggles will cycle through different formats. My font color will go through blue to green to a light gray back to black. So I have the commonly used font colors that I will use building my file, but it's very, very easy to access. Same with my fill color. My first selection will give me a light yellow. My second one will give me a dark blue a gray, and then back to a white. So if I ever need to build a header, I can simply write header and then press control shift K three times. And now I have a gray filled in header. Very, very easy and very fast to do. Increase, decrease decimal. This is one I find I use pretty frequently. So if I hit control shift one, this will format this as a number. If I hit control comma, it will decrease the decimal. Control shift comma will add decimals. 
I find this health, I find alt H nine or alt H zero is pretty slow. So having a shortcut to increase and decrease decimals becomes very helpful. Last one I use is just to hide grid lines. Pretty simple. Control shift G will just turn off grid lines on any sheet. That's not one I candidly use a lot, but is helpful to know. Two really quick call outs. If you're going to use your personal macro workbook, you cannot undo macros. There is a way to build this in. But for the most part, your macros will be permanent. So I would consider the risk and reward for each one of your choices. If I were to use my color toggle up here and accidentally color all of this as an input, I could simply click it a few more times and get back to black. No real harm done. Where I'm actually saving myself the process of using Alt HFC. And then if I really do want that specific blue, I need to go into M all colors, maybe put in a custom number with blue of 255, which is a huge pain and takes a lot of time compared to just using a simple shortcut. That is obviously one example where it helps a lot to use it and there's very little risk of using it as even if your toggle didn't work, you could always go HFC automatic and you have black. Something that is helpful, something that saves you time, but does not pose a serious downside to your file. Insert delete columns. This is one I'll tell you, I actually used to have a macro for and was not a good decision because I said, oh, well, it's kind of a pain to have to go, you know, Alt HIC to insert a column or even if you use the shortcut of control shift plus sign you have to go entire column so maybe it's faster if i just put in macros for this that is one that is very dangerous with your file and honestly doesn't take that long especially if you use shortcuts like control spacebar will highlight your full column and then control minus sign will delete it and now i can use control z to undo that which is super helpful again shift spacebar will insert a full row and then control shift plus sign will insert a row I can do that shift space bar, control minus sign will delete it. And I can use control Z to undo both of those actions, which is very, very helpful. So if you have a shortcut that you were thinking of building that will save you maybe a second or a couple seconds even, but could potentially cost you an hour or multiple hours of redoing analysis or redoing a file because you broke it by accidentally clicking the wrong shortcut key and inserting rows or deleting rows with critical information, I would not advise you to do that. And then number two, this is a file I have on my computer, right? This is a personal computer I use. And so I can set this up however I want. If I break something, it's really on me to deal with. And I have a lot of flexibility. If you are using this on a work computer or on some system that is managed by your organization, make sure you comply with your organization's guidelines and their rules for how you can set up. Because I would honestly assume that a lot of people working at, you know, particularly larger companies like consulting firms, banks, finance organizations probably have some kind of professional toolkit that they've built in and that they may have given you some of these shortcuts and they'll give you pre-built formatting templates and helpful things that will emulate what I have here. This is what I use. And these are the ones that I have found to be differentially valuable to increase my efficiency using Excel. But your organization may use different shortcuts. Your organization may have different needs that they have likely tried to think about. I would always advise you to think about what are the resources you have available at your job or at your organization before trying to build something yourself.